What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Yee Yee Podcast, episode 55. Hey, what's happening? We've got a great guest on today, if you're here for Hannah Barron. Um, fun interview. The subtitles for YouTube are going to have a really fun time trying to decipher what she's saying. Do you think she has the thickest accent of anyone you've ever heard? Um, I don't know about that. I do know that when someone describes themselves as a mud dauber, they are probably from Alabama, and it's going to be worth your time to listen to the interview. She is a character. She's great, too. I feel like we've done enough stuff with her now that we've gotten pretty close and we're like on a friend level. So she's just always, always a good hang. So definitely a good interview. You're going to want to listen to that. That's coming up real quick before you listen to that interview. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. We are releasing one podcast episode a week, every Wednesday, sometimes Tuesday nights, depending on if Brian wants to get it done in time or not. And we're doing a lot of different videos um, that are coming up. We've, we've got a lot of different vlog type style videos, and then we've got some new stuff coming up. Why don't you show them, by the way, if you're listening audio, you're not going to see this, but this will come out, we're recording this on Monday, this will come out tomorrow night. We're dropping a lot of new products. That's the shirt that you've worked on. Boom. Super dad tea. If you're listening, this is our Father's Day tea for the year. We had another idea, and then at the last minute, Hayden and I came up with this idea. I don't and even know what the old one was. It, uh, I thought it turned out awesome. So yeah, it's Super Dad's like a Superman theme. Uh, it's got the logo really big on the back, nice and subtle on the front. And if you're a father out there, or if you're a wife, or a mother, and you need a good Father's Day gift. It's coming up. I think it's the perfect gift. Or if you guys have dogs, do you have any thought on that? Dog dads out Ooh, there? Ooh, hot debate. Okay, so whenever Mother's Day came around, first thing Taylor did was she said, uh, are you going to wish me happy Mother's Day? And I was like, is there something I don't know about that I should know about? She goes, no, I'm Olive's mom. And I was like, no, 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 no. We're not going to get that started. If you were a dog, if you're listening to this and you're a dog mom or dog dad, you don't get to celebrate Mother's Day and Father's Day. Is that fair? Uh, I respect it. I respect it. Yeah, I don't disagree. Um, if you want to buy this Father's Day shirt, though, <laughs> you have a dog. Actually, <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> this is the one, one exception. This is the one exception if you want to give us money. Um, so, yeah, really cool shirt. If you have been around for a little bit or if you just saw our Mother's Day shirt, they sell out really quickly. Um, a lot of people that wanted the Mother's Day shirt weren't online whenever we released them. Um, we're releasing them in the next few days. So if you're in our Yee Nation Facebook group, we'll post in there. Um, if you're on our email list, you'll get an email or a text or whatever you're signed up for. If you're not, go to yee.com, scroll down to the bottom, and you'll see a little email sign up. But yeah, so that's releasing this week. We also just restocked the Diblets. Here you go. You can hold these. Um, the Diblets sold out another thing that sold out extremely quickly within a few hours of us releasing them about three weeks ago. And so we restocked them. We restocked a bunch, but I still think that there's a chance that they're going to go fast. If you're listening on audio and you have no idea what we're talking about, the D Yee Diblets are, uh, they are gems? No. They are they are just Diblets. Well, they're called jib Gibbets. Crocs markets theirs as Crocs gibbets, and they put them on there in the holes of the Crocs to accessorize them. You can buy a bunch of different stuff. So we made some Yee Yee Diblets, little play on words for Earl Diblets Jr. Put them in your Crocs um, and show off the Yee Nation pride. And they turned out awesome. They're probably going to sell pretty fast. It's also a great way for us to avoid copyright laws. Yeah, we just kind of... <laughs> I'm make, like, I don't know if we should actually make, be talking about make this. Make Earl but. puns. That sounds like the actual product. This is the um, River Kelly uh, tribute shirt for this year. This is a onesie that I have in my hand right here. Uh, we've actually never sold a onesie mm -hmm. uh, for the River Kelly fund before. Uh, this shirt is going to be available until this Friday night. Um, today is May 16th, which is Riv's birthday the day that we are uh, recording this. Uh, if you don't know who Riv is, Riv is uh, Granger and Amber Smith's son who passed away in a Johnny accident uh, at three years old. And we have the River Kelly Fund, which Amber, his mom, uh, started and supports. And uh, we support it with the apparel. And so this is a really cool way um, for us to be able to give back and for Amber to uh, 
make uh, meaning and and make good out of um, something terrible that happens. So 100% of proceeds will be donated to that and it'll be available uh, until Friday night. Yeah, and if it's your first time around or if you're a new listener, we do a River Kelly shirt every year. And um, like Parker said, that they're they're only here for a certain amount of time. So I see questions all year round of people asking about the Riv shirts. Um, we order the exact amount that people pre-order so that we don't have a lot of uh, leftover inventory stock, which is something that we try to do with a lot of our products. So this is your only week to get it. I cannot stress that enough. Um, if you're on our email list and everything, you'll you'll get you'll get notified. But you can get, I mean, we've, we're dropping three new products this week between the, well, the Diblets are a restock, but the Father's Day shirt and then um, the Live Like Riv shirts. So yeah, lots of new exciting stuff. Speaking of which, we do have, a lot of people are asking, we do have the summer launch on June 17th. What are, what are some of the, besides like some really cool, by the way, the shirts and hats are really cool this launch. Um, besides our regular shirts and hats that we launch, uh, what, what are some other things that people can expect? We have a uh, short sleeve button up performance fishing shirts uh, that turned out great. That's probably the most uh, uh, new endeavor that we have taken on. It took us a long time to design those. They turned out great. They're incredible. We have uh, flags that came back that a lot of people have been asking about um, and a bunch of other stuff that I'm kind of blanking on. Right Collar shirts? Uh, yes, we have a golf polo. Or just a polo. I yeah, won't call it a golf a, yeah. polo. It's just a black polo um, with a collar. So a lot of people ask uh, for stuff that's a little bit nicer that they can wear to work. Uh, yeah, two swim trunks coming out. And then we also have some really sharp rope pads that are a little bit different than anything that we've done before. Yeah, we, we kept hearing from people that the uh, between the, the performance fishing uh, collared shirt and then the, the polo shirt that a lot of people out there can like have to wear a certain thing Monday through Thursday. But then Fridays, they're able to actually wear... Like they still have to wear a collared shirt, but it can be, you know, personal, like whether it's a brand or whatever. So kind of clicked and we were like, oh, we got to start making collared shirts. But the performance fishing collared shirts are unreal quality. Like I think that they beat everything else out there on the market. So make sure y'all keep, uh, keep an eye out for that. That'll come in the next few weeks, uh, June 17th. So keep an eye out. And yeah, now we've got Hannah, by the way, Celtics and six. All right, we now welcome on very special guest to the podcast, Hannah Barron. Hannah, what did you just say that you look like right before we started recording? I said I look like a wild bush youngin. Hannah, have you ever been on a podcast? You're like seven feet away from the microphone. <laughs> he positioned it first of all. Do you, you know you can pull it closer. closer. Hold, up. To touch pull it. It. pull it up real close. Pull it. I'll pull get dirt close. on it. No, come on. They would know. Is that better? <laughs> I, I mean, guess. you're over here like... You can turn it however you want. That thing can go wherever you want. There you go. There How's you go. That? Perfect. Is that there better? Go. What? Okay, what did you say you look like? I said I look like a wild bush youngin, and I blame y'all for having this Yee Yee Day event with all the mud, and for some reason, I get tackled and thrown in the lake. I didn't find any catfish. Y'all don't have catfish in that little pond. We don't have either. fish at all. No. Someone no. caught a perch. Mm-hmm. Today? Yep. Mm-hmm. They sure did. How did that get there? I have no idea. Cause that thing was dry, like not. It's been, it's had water in it for a while, but mm-hmm. at some point, it was definitely dry. Mm-hmm. I guess there was a flood. Hannah's just so fun, though. When she comes to Yee Day, you're just gonna, you'll always find Hannah just in the middle. If you see some ATV in the lake, chances are <laughs> Hannah is in the passenger seat or in the back. Laughing. Hannah, you bring great energy. We would love to have that at the Yee Farm. How much? By the way, this would be the group that would you would be discussing with. So, what would it take for you to become? A ye employee. Oof, By I'd the way, to, this is just an interview. Yeah, I'd have to move from Alabama. Mm. And you're Alabama, mm-hmm. born and raised, aren't you? Yeah, you we got leaving. we got we got too many catfish boxes out back home. We got to utilize those. What if we gave you a uh, bleep this out, Brian? What if we gave you a budget for uh, catfishing, <laughs> and you moved here, and that's on top of your salary? By the way, Parker's gonna kill me after this. A catfish budget. Yeah, I don't matter. know what that means. You she can't buy- be bought. No Alabama girl would leave Alabama for money. Also, we right. Alabama's have to hire- God's country. Okay, so here. Okay, here's a great conversation. Okay. What it, do you believe that Alabama is God's country? Because yes. that's a that's a hot argument. What is God's country? America. 
<laughs> That's America. true. America. My fiance the whole Taylor. Line, except for California. Okay, okay, there you go. My fiance Taylor always makes the joke because every time we go somewhere new, like uh, we'll land in Charlotte and drive like an hour out into the, you know, like the Appalachia, or if I'm in the Southeast or like wherever I'm at. I did this whenever we were in Northern California, which, you know, California is California, but Northern California is beautiful. Northern California is not California. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But anywhere I go where it's beautiful, I just say it's God's country. And I didn't realize that I said that. I would just look around and be like, this is God's country. And she says, you say everywhere is God's country. I was like, no, I'm not going to say Cabo is God's country. Like, it's beautiful, but it's not God's country. But I feel like Alabama actually could be God's country. The Bible Belt down there. Hannah, how would you explain to someone who's maybe not familiar with you, um, but pretty much everyone in the outdoor world knows the the name Hannah Bear now, how would you describe the last five, ten years, who you are, and what's happened It's been a with whirlwind. Life? Yeah. Which... Where did it begin? Huh. Actually, I had a video go viral. Didn't mean for it to go viral. This is before TikTok and all that stuff. I posted it on Instagram, and we had bought this little cheap video camera. If Dad listens to this and hears that I call it cheap, he'll get mad. But <laughs> Shout was, out, Jeff. Yeah. Why isn't he here today? Bleep. He's building a house. Oh, God. God's country. He's building God's a house country. in God's country. He's building a house by himself. <laughs> he built an A-frame in like two weeks. But yeah. What a legend. Of course he is. Yeah. By, yeah, the, way. by the way, her dad is like the coolest dude ever. Like, he's way he's cooler the definition than I am. of cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Humble beginnings. Uh, 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 camera. Cheap camera. Yeah. Cheap camera. We bought this cheap camera. And the first time we ever used it, we set it on a tripod on the front of the boat. Because we don't ever stay in the boat. We got somebody blocking holes. This was back when we just fished natural holes, boat ramps, stuff like that. So you got to block the different holes where the catfish can get out. And we had it on the front of the boat, and it fell in the water. Like the whole little tripod just fell in the water. We got it out, dried it off. The next time we went, we tried it again. Set it up, got a little video, and I posted it on Instagram. And like overnight, it got... 20 million views from where somebody saw it and shared it on their Facebook page and it just kept getting reshared and at that time I didn't even know that you know social media influencers right. whatever you want to call it is was a thing so, so it all started growing from there it's interesting to hear that because so many people say that it's just like a slow burn whereas you were just I posted one video and it went viral mm -hmm. it was really like that it was but at that time nobody had ever heard of catfish noodling hardly other than like the hillbilly hand fishing show it wasn't well known like it is now. Now everybody does it. But. And that was completely normal for you. Oh yeah. Right? Growing That's how you up. Grew up. Which not I grew up hunting and fishing and like running trot lines for catfish and stuff like that. But we didn't start catfish noodling or grabbling, hand fishing, whatever you want to call it, until I was like fifteen. And that's when our game warden, actually, Dad cut up a bunch of wood for him on the sawmill. And he said, y'all want to go noodling? And we were thinking, like, where you take the pool noodles and cut them up. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like, jugging like jugs. Like jugs, yeah, like yeah. jugs. Mm -hmm. Bush Could, hooks. Go ahead. So, so we went out with him, and after that, we were hooked. Oh, and I like what you did there. On, well, there, is, there are no hooks and in, in hand fishing. But. Could, could you explain noodling to me like I'm five? Yes. <laughs> For someone who may not know. I yes. know, but Parker, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, we both know what it is, but maybe there's someone out there that does, does Maybe yeah. someone, like the village idiot. <laughs> but we know for sure. <laughs> no, but explain it to us because there's a lot of people. It's still, yeah, you say, you say a lot of people do it now, it. Mm -hmm. but there's still a lot of people yeah. that don't. And everybody thinks that they're just swimming around and you can catch right, them. Right, exactly. And that's exactly. not the case. You got to wait until they're spawning and they'll find holes that sunlight can't get to because sunlight can kill their eggs. So that's like under boat ramps, under concrete. They have natural holes in the banks. We fish those too. They're a little sketchy, but it's still fun. We put out catfish boxes in Alabama. It's legal. I don't think it's legal in Texas, it's not. but yeah, Alabama. Uh, anywhere sunlight can't get to, they'll get in there and they'll blow out a hole and they'll lay their eggs. And you will find these holes, whether they're natural or a box you put out run your arm in there and they'll attack it protecting their nest because area. they're mean at this when they're spawning they're Ooh, really yes. aggressive yes they're gonna bite anything that comes in that now hole what's meaner a yellow or a channel cat i don't like channel cats that's what i thought all. that's yeah. what i thought that's because a channel cat stuck me in the arm which is another big question people has if, is their fins and on flatheads they're blunt no matter how big they are you can catch a five pound flathead and their fins will be blunt but you can catch a channel cat and they'll stick you or a blue cat, once they get bigger, they oh, get blues blind. are the meanest, aren't they? Blues are the mean ones. Okay, that's what yes. I thought. Definitely. I think that people are just so fascinated by it because 
there's just something in the back of your mind as a human being where we're just bred that dark water is dangerous. Oh, it stay goes stay away it from stinks. the dark water. And especially there's a creature in there. <laughs> and not only that, but it is going to bite you yeah. with its mouth. And so people are just blown away by your courage. And then you just come up there and you put it on your shoulder. <laughs> it's just one of the craziest things that I've ever seen. Was there a time when, was there ever a situation where things got sketchy or it was like that could have been bad, yeah. but you you always talk about it like it's not. There's nothing dangerous about it. But was ever there ever a situation where that happened where it was dangerous? It's more like you think about it after the fact and you look back on it and you're like, yeah, that could have been bad. Like I've almost had my arm broke twice by they were both like forty to fifty pound blues. We were talking about how blues are meaner, which catfish. I mean, the flatheads will spin more like a gator do the gator roll. But I had a hold of this one, and I came up with a way to grab them kind of on accident after doing it for a few years where it worked best for me because it's more about technique than it is just strength or whatever. Right. And I'll run my arm between their gill and their gill plate on the backside, and that way it doesn't hurt them, doesn't mess up their gills or nothing, and hold their bottom jaw from the inside. So I'll have their head right here. And yeah. But I had a blue cat, or two blue cats actually, one last year and one the year before, twist me around and had my arm behind my back kind of like in the chicken wing position and if he'd have oh. kept spinning he'd have busted yeah. something mm. would have been bad yeah <laughs> that was so crazy wow <laughs> and the biggest fish i ever caught we guessed his Pull that mic just a little bit closer to you how's there you that go. i think you I can't, really can't be bit. too close to it. i like we have to uh sanitize mine after every single time you really can't you can touch it doesn't matter i, I basically make out with mine so don't <laughs> use this one <laughs> don't use i'll remember that <laughs> everybody <laughs> remember that don't use that mic matt Carricker was on that one last <laughs> <laughs> nice. he made out nice. with his by the way <laughs> good to know good to know is this good yeah that's perfect yeah, that's great perfect. that's perfect yeah. I, I forgot you I forgot what we were saying. Oh, were you I was talking about my biggest catfish. Oh, yeah. What's yeah? yeah. What's the biggest you've ever got? The biggest uh, flathead, we kind of guessed the weight because one scale said 61, but the other scale said 76. So we just cut it in half and said 67 because that's I don't think that's how cat. that works, but that's an interesting way yeah. to go about it. Yeah, we just cut it in half. <laughs> I, I should have went the with scales, the bigger scales. I, yeah, I think one of the mm -hmm. scales was just wrong. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Wow. I think you were on the one that was 76. I like that one better. You jumped on that one. Mm -hmm. I like By the that way, one way better. What, are, you like, are you a youth shirt size? Because we send you gear sometimes, and I'm not the one that does that, but I'm always like, yeah. hey... Send the youth youth section over to Hannah. You're tiny. <laughs> I cut my shirts off from y'all. I mean, <laughs> well, Lulu's the same way. One of our shippers, even if it's a smaller and extra mm -hmm. small, she just goes ahead and crops it. Yeah, and that's just I she's got just to. used to or it. Or it'll now. go like down here. Do you think that there's something back to the catfish? Like, do you think that there's something that is a part of the reason that you blew up because you were tiny and you're cute and so it's the opposite person of what you would think of what would everybody be. else has seen before they're yeah. like look at this little girl catching like, a catfish if yeah. you go on youtube and you look up anything but well i guess n now it's different but now, a few yeah. years ago like mm -hmm. now all the girls are doing it but yeah. used to like girls weren't getting in and doing that mm -hmm. like no. did, did you, growing up in high like high school junior high growing mm -hmm. up you were do, you were doing this you were new oh yeah and dad. i in high school i was actually the weird girl that like hunted and fished too much and all that i didn't play any sports i taught kids how to weld when i was in high school so. <laughs> and now look at you you have literally yeah. led a generation of of people to not only just noodling in general but just to the country world and giving them a behind the scenes look and it's been so cool to see it from our end to see it grow from the very first time i saw you is probably it's probably in college at the time 2015 or 2016 mm -hmm. but since then now you've you've been able to bring in musicians like Co Wetzel and yeah. Dale Brisby and is there anybody out there who like is on your radar that it's like that would be my dream person to take noodling? Has anybody come to mind? Goodness, I don't even know to be honest with you. I mean, y'all got a George Drake poster on the wall now. That would be cool. That's, That's Matt Carricker said that was a, that was the person he loved to work with. If you're listening well, to this podcast, we've had two George Straits today. We don't know when we're going to drop these podcasts, but yeah, two people now Can't have said. Well, I mean, you got him incredible. on the wall. It's like he's, he's in your mind now. That would be incredible. What, well, mm -hmm. I mean, Alan Jackson's also on oh, that yeah, poster. We, you don't you don't want to take old Alan. But look at the writing. If we could turn the camera up here for a second, at least, whose name is biggest? 
And my eyesight ain't that good. I'm going to see the big words. I got a feeling Alan Jackson would out-noodle George Strait. Mm-hmm. Don't might. come at me I would for like to see this. it. I'd like to see it. Those long, stringy arms. I mean, Alan's mm-hmm. tall. Alan listens to this podcast, actually. Actually, Alan, Alan is an avid listener. This Perfect. Is, this is a challenge. <laughs> Alan Jackson, you are uh, apparently going to out-noodle George Strait. Yep, let's we'll see. Loop. Only one way to find out. What if they actually set up something like that that just broke the internet, and then we were like, we're the ones behind that. Y'all didn't give us I gotta be there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, okay, so we were talking about that. I think, have you ever, um, oh man, what's her name? Sydney from... Barcelona Outdoors. Mm-hmm. We took her last okay. year. So I've got a question. Oh, and you also took YP back before. Wait, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a lot of people won't understand because they don't. They're not up to date with the Barstool Outdoors thing. Mm-hmm. Whenever that job opening came open, so Barstool Sports has a huge brand. They're very big in the sports media space, but they also have a very big outdoors brand. There was a guy that was there. He left, and then they opened it up. And you were honestly the first person I thought about. I thought that like. You don't have to tell us, but did they reach out? Mm-mm. I never even knew there was a job opening. Really? Mm-hmm. Where Do you think that, like, would that be something that you'd ever be interested in, or are you mm. just so focused on your own craft and your own content? Because the benefit of going with a brand like that is you don't control as, mu- as many things, but at the end of the day, you're also going to be on a platform that's in front of so many more right. people. Like, so many people would know about mm-hmm. Hannah Barron. So, like, what are your – if they would have come to you – would you have been interested in having that conversation? I've got a whole lot that's already on my plate, and I feel like I wouldn't. I feel like I could do it, but I feel like it would take a lot of the fun out of it. And for me, if I always said, if any of this takes the fun out of it, I'm not going to do it anymore, which is why we've never tried for like a TV show or anything like that, because we can do this and we can still have just as much fun doing it as we did back before we ever had social media. That was going to be one of my questions, actually, is it's it's one of those things that, you love and you see it when people end up making a career out of it Mm -hmm. you see it with sports or really a lot of the guys in social media too and they're like i mean it's it just turns into an obligation you see it with musicians as well Mm -hmm. but you've been able to you know how to draw the line i'm sure uh, it seems like jeff is is good about that too where y'all are able to like collab and i'm sure it helps so much to be, Mm -hmm. be able to be like i'm not on my own in this because otherwise, it's just so hard to make those kind of decisions with mm-hmm. so many things changing on your own to have someone Definitely. else to be like, hey, what should we do about this? Mm-hmm. And my dad's my best friend, so. Does he help you with a lot of, like, the, the management side of stuff? Mm, not really. He's like, you don't more... have a manager, do you? Well, I do. Oh, you do? Technically okay. now. Not for, like, my social media accounts or anything. But um, this year, actually, like, two weeks ago or so, oh, wow. I signed on with somebody just to talk to sponsors right and partners exactly. that's all you need to help with mm-hmm. like stay out of my content i'm yeah. gonna i know what i'm doing i know what works but mm-hmm. the sponsorship world is a whole nother thing and there's probably yes. so much money you could i just be can't leaving. keep up with it well and it kind of sucks i mean it kind of sucks dealing with because you are a content creator you are, are inherently not you love the creative side of thing that's mm-hmm. inherently not interesting to you there are people out there that do not care and they're not good at the creative stuff, but they're really good at the business side of stuff. Right. And so it's like whenever those two mesh together, mm-hmm. that's whenever it's a perfect partnership. And I've always been too nice. Like, I don't like telling people no. Mm-hmm. Like, look at me. I'm doing a podcast. Yeah, right? I know. Like, you're doing, you doing a podcast with two idiots. <laughs> You've come here like four times to it's been a great Yee Yee. It's amazing. Thank you for coming every time. Yeah, thank y'all for having me. You've well, got you've gotten to go on uh, like amazing hunts now too, with all the connections mm-hmm. that you made in the few That's last been few years. Yes. Have you gained a new love for a particular animal or a certain type of hunting or elk. fishing? Ooh. Elk. Does elk. Any, does anything stand out? Elk for sure. Like I never would have probably had the chance to hunt elk if it hadn't been for the social media stuff and the connections I've made with people. Like Christy Lee Cook, we go elk hunting with her now and. We took her down catfishing last year. She won't be able to go this year because she's actually due to have a baby right in the middle of catfish season. Mm. So. Well, I mean, that seems like a cop-out to me. <laughs> exactly. I Tell mean, her come that. Come on. <laughs> a real Alabama Southern girl. It's yeah. like whenever let that stand in the way. It's like when a, in the WNBA, whenever a girl like misses an entire season because she's pregnant, I'm like, okay. Co- I mean, you could have mm-hmm. could have played a couple games. Yeah. <laughs> Here I am. Belly. By the way, men just have it way better. We don't have menstrual cycles. We don't give birth. We don't we don't have anything. And then uh, here I am talking about how women should be playing their seasons. What is it about elk hunting that you think 
the you landscape. Watch so much. Cause to me, it just Oof. seems very intimidating mm -hmm. in terms of I have to get in shape for three months. Like I'm training for a marathon for a hunt that I don't even know if I'm going to mm -hmm. see anything. And see, I didn't even do all that. We just went into it and I thought I was going to die when we started packing these animals out. Oof. But yeah. Wait, so you but had, it was really shot rewarding. One. We did. Um, the first year I hunted with Christy, which was not this past season, but the season before, I shot my second elk. And the first, the one I shot a few years ago, we packed out on horseback. But I got the full experience with Christy when I shot this one because we had to get up there and get it and quarter it up up there. And then pack it out. And after that, everybody else killed an elk, and we helped pack those out, oh. too. And one of them was five miles downhill. And I was thinking, it's downhill. It's not going to be bad. That's got uh, mm. that's got to be just as it's bad. Terrible. because Just as bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, would you rather your quads hurt or your thighs? Exactly. That's one the of them's going to hurt. Yeah, that's the difference and between uphill and downhill. How many days in did you see it? The elk? We got really lucky on that one and saw it the first day in. Wow. Mm -hmm. really lucky wow well it was that afternoon but like really lucky and that year was really good for me i don't know what it was but everywhere i went the first hunt i killed that was just my year and now i've been on a bunch of dry spells like i did not kill in kansas this year kansas kicked my tail for the first time in five years but that was my year so this year dad actually killed his first elk and i cried oh no nice. i didn't cry when i killed mine but i cried when he killed his and yeah, but it's your pops. It it's cool. It's cool mm -hmm. to see, and like you know how important that is. What did him. he shoot it with? He shot it. I think it was a six point five PRC, and it was like six hundred and eighty yards. Oh. He, was, he was a poke. Wow. He was way out there. Wow. And it was only three of us packing it out, so we had to make two trips, and we were climbing eight hundred foot, like on hands and knees in some places. I'm guessing you had to track that thing, right? Oh, he fell. Really? Mm -hmm. wow. I think he shot him twice. Because he ran a piece, and, you know, if they're still I'm running, shoot them again. Wow. <laughs> okay, I've got a question. What, uh, is this you? That is me. Are you surprised that I found this picture? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so. It's we'll... a fake alligator before oh, anybody says anything. Oh, come on, really? Yeah. Okay, so if you're listening at home, you should be watching. Follow us on YouTube. I'm going to um, find baby So you pictures. can see all the different stuff. We're going to put this photo on here, but it is a young Hannah Barron how old are you here? Here's an even better one. <laughs> oh, wow. Wait, here. Pass me that. Is that I'll turn Jet? the brightness up. Yes, yeah. that is Jet. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that looks like... Your dad's handsome. He's, he's got a, the stash. He's a handsome guy He's got right the there. stash. By I've, the way, I want to look like Jeff Barron. How old is he? 51. Yeah. The dude I've is got, ripped. The most redneck baby pictures. <laughs> That's with the couple squirrels. Um, let's see. This one that I was talking about, you're holding an alligator, but you say it's fake, which it is really disappointing. Gator. I was I'm thinking sorry. that maybe it was real. It was fake. My cousin was holding up a snake, so I decided I wanted to be cool, and I went and picked up the gator. Mm. I would have loved to have met a like third or fourth grade Hannah Barron. Was mm. your accent thicker? It was worse. Oh, I'm mm. sure. Yeah, it's gotten better now that i've started doing all this stuff because i've been made fun of for yeah. it so much and when i was like in college in high school that was just normal everyone everyone man the subtitles are gonna be tough for this episode <laughs> appreciate y'all <laughs> yeah this is i'm talking good i'm like trying i'm trying really hard to enunciate stuff. have you had anything to drink today water well, we're <laughs> water. <laughs> we're gonna water. get a cup. You know what we should have done is had some words for her to read because I've what I've noticed about people from Alabama is that y'all love to make like two syllable words, three syllables, and three syllable words, mm -hmm. four syllables. So get you a, get you a couple ranch waters who is sponsoring EE Day this year, and uh, you you'll probably be on that path. Actually, I think I opened one, and then I got on the side by side with BMO, and as soon as I got on it, it just filled up with dirt. Mm. Oh, the worst. So what are you what are you doing after this? You're you're in Texas for a little mm. while, right? Are you going on some hunts? I'm going on a helicopter hog hunt. Oh. Okay, so have you ever done that? Yes. That looks like the most fun it. thing in the world. I've never done it. It's so fun. So explain it to the listeners that don't have any idea. All right. So hogs are really overpopulated in Texas. I don't know if they are here mm. in the Austin area, but down where we're going, or I don't even know. We've gone to Matagorda around Houston. We've gone to a few different places. They're really bad overpopulated. It's the same way back home, but back home it's so thick that you 
can't mm. kill them with helicopters. Okay. So, so this is just another means of like population control, and in my opinion, like the most effective. Because you can get in a helicopter, and the fellow we go with herds cows with them too. So he's doing the same thing and herding these pigs out in the open where you can get a clear shot at them and take the whole herd out. You can drop a ton. What do you shoot them with? Oh, an AR. I think we shot a two two three last time. And, and he's able to keep it steady enough while they're running. It seems like it'd be you so hard. You just shoot hard. a lot. Mm. Dude, mm -hmm. how many bullets do y'all use? I don't know. You get good at it, though. Like, you got to, it takes a little bit to get yeah. used to it. And then there's dad who's just like. Tick, 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 tick. Is Jeff just good at everything, your yes. dad? Yes, other than technology. He's terrible with technology. Oh, you don't you, say. I would have never thought did that. Did you see those <laughs> photos, though? I mean, Jeff's been literally down and dear since before we were born. He was down and dear before he was born. <laughs> he came out of the womb <laughs> with a thirty out six. Just like yep. where them white tail. Where they at? No. Wait. Speaking of white tail, uh, can you do it? My deer grunt. Yeah. Can you do it? Oh, Please Lord. do it. I feel like I need the to subtitles will have a, a real bit. fun time with this one. Yeah. It's unreal. It sounds exactly like a, you know. <laughs> I was hunting this season, and. Uh, usually I don't hear that, and but it was in it was in mating season whenever we were going and in the rut. I was sit yeah I was in the rut and I was sitting there and I heard that and I was like Hannah, Hannah? where's Hannah? <laughs> it's like that's exactly what Hannah sounds like. It's just a Hannah call at that yeah. point. It's a Hannah call. <laughs> you see they're me actually, running out of the woods. They're oh. actually copying you at that point. Mm -hmm. Have I'll you heard the pig squeal? Actually, no, and I want you to go ahead and do all the different calls that you have. <laughs> Start with the pig squeal. <laughs> I'm gonna back this up again. Is that okay? Yeah, it's good. It's going to be loud enough. Yeah, it's going to be really loud. <laughs> <laughs> the snort at the end. Yep. Can you do it one more time? I'm going to yeah, put this on sure. you. <laughs> and do the white tail. <laughs> Just incredible. You know turkey? Ooh, I can't really do a turkey. Those are My hard. turkey sounds no, like tough. he's got laryngitis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you, do you have a uh, a last meal? I'm curious Ooh, of all the games gosh. that you've eaten. Oh, gosh. If you get one meal. I don't know. That's the hard part. I don't know. Like, my dad, every time he says snapping turtle. Really? Most Alabama yes. answer ever. Sauce pecan, which is like a Cajun thing, but snapping turtle. We actually did a YouTube video for him, ooh, which I'm supposed to like monetize and all for him because he don't know how to do titles <laughs> or any of that. I got to do that for him. Thank you for reminding me. There you go. Hey, that's, <laughs> what, that's what we're here for. If nothing else comes from this podcast, it's a reminder. We're helping out Papa Jeff. How do you prepare a snapping turtle? Mm, crock pot. You just slow cook it, which is good. It's got like seven different kinds of meat in it, they say. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. all right, we're going to wrap this up in a minute. I do have... Um, Two questions we ask all of our guests. These are from Google. These aren't questions from myself. These aren't questions from Parker. Parker doesn't even know what I'm about to ask. These are questions that the people want to know on Google. That's scary. Is Hannah Barron single? <laughs> Not really? Mm -hmm. It's the top question <laughs> on Google. I've seen is Hannah Barron married. Because I was engaged at well, one I, point. I wasn't going to ask that one because I didn't want to. I, I didn't know if that was a touchy Hit subject. Hit a sore but, spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, the engagement didn't work out. We're still friends. He's a great dude. But he is a preacher now, which is great. And I just travel so much that it's hard for me to be around with as much as we both needed. Sure. Like he couldn't travel with me and I couldn't always be home. So, yeah. That was several years ago. We're still friends. I have recently started dating somebody in like the past couple months. Let's go. Yep. She was waiting for the Yee podcast to reveal that. <laughs> By the way, have you talked about that on any podcast? No. Okay. So this is breaking news. <laughs> breaking news. Hannah Barron is no longer single. <laughs> Country boys everywhere. By the way, tears. let's watch our view rate on this YouTube video. Everyone just clicked <laughs> off right now. Everyone just stopped listening. <laughs> Hey, good yep. for you, by the way. Thank you. That's awesome. My other question, once again, this is a Google question, not my question. Oh, gosh. How much money does Hannah Barron have? Not much, because I looked it up, and it said that my net worth was like so many million, and I'm like, where is it at, though? <laughs> Why don't I have this? Well, how much money do you have in your bank account right now? 
<laughs> really? Uh, let me check. I think I got at least three dollars. Matt character. I'm waiting. Said, Matt character said he has hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> hundreds. How much sure. money do you have in your wallet? You don't even have a wallet. You're a girl. I got a, a credit purse. card. You got a credit card. I got a credit card. This girl likes plastic. <laughs> we just swap it. That way we ain't got to worry about how much money we spend. Yeah, out Dave, Ram- out of Dave Ramsey mind. loves that, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> you got anything else, Park? I don't think so. Do you want to... We've had people give some life advice or just a quote that they enjoy hmm. to close it out. Do you want to close out the podcast with a quote or a piece of advice? Mm. It can be serious. It can be funny. It can be whatever you want it to be. I feel like my piece of advice was be who you are. And don't try to fit anybody else's box and you'll do better. Because that's what I did. Like, I never, I was always just marching to the beat of my own drum. And I could never fit in anywhere. But that was okay with me. And look where I am now. Well, that certainly comes across to us. Thanks for always being you. And thanks for traveling across the country all these times to come see us. Appreciate (laughs) y'all. Appreciate y'all. That's perfect to end with. (laughs) Well, thank you for coming on. We'll have you on again soon. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see y'all next week. Eat your veggies. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all.